Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos. And if you're here for a second, third, or fourth time, thank you so much for coming back and getting creative. All right, guys, this is going to be another fun painting for my uh, beginner painters. So grab your supplies, transfer your traceable to your surface, and as always, make sure you take progress photos. Now you're going to see on mine that I went over the traceable with a black Sharpie marker, and this is one of the few times that I would recommend that you do the same at home if you're a little nervous about doing the letters. Um, and you'll see in the video that because I'm using student grade paint, the um, lines from the Sharpie marker will still kind of show through the paint, so I'll be able to um, uh, paint right on top of that. So whatever you need to do, uh, do what you need for your painting. So we are starting with a light lemony yellow, and that is yellow and white. I'm using the large flat brush, and you can see that I'm putting it right around the cat and um, uh, going right over those traceable lines with that Sharpie marker on there. All right, so now we're using that same mixture, white, yellow, with a little bit of raw sienna, and following uh, the perimeter of what we of the color we just used. And if you are on a stretched canvas at home, I do recommend when you reach the edges of the canvas, carrying this color around the side. And where the two colors meet, where the light yellow and this darker meet, um, just use light pressure with your brush to kind of diffuse the line on top of it. And you can kind of see that I'm using like little X marks kind of uh, hatch marking back and forth. You can finger paint if you want, anything that you need to do to kind of cover your area. Now, if you're one of my first time painters, remember to take a deep breath, relax, you're doing a great job. We did just pick up some white and put that right on top of our background color. And this is called wet on wet blending. And because the background's wet and you introduce the new paint, you can do more of your blending and have a little more fun with it. All right, for the next step, we're actually, um, I don't want that pure bright red, so I'm mixing some yellow in with it. You have full permission on any of my paintings to change colors, so don't feel like you have to stick with what I am doing. If you want to use the red or something different, go right ahead. And again, because I'm on using student grade paint, you can see that the paint's transparent enough that I'm able to see the lines underneath uh, for when I go to do the words. If you want to challenge yourself, uh, don't do the black Sharpie marker on there, and then just use your observation on doing um, the letters. And we'll be working with the pressure of our brush when we do that today. All right, so moving into the red, now that we got that bottom space filled up, and again, just kind of slapping it on there, changing some of the shade a little bit. I don't want you to stress about uh, this being perfect. I want you to just have fun today. And I've got a few other ones where I'm recreating some vintage posters. Um, this is obviously a very popular poster design that gets painted a lot. Um, so I figured I'd start with this one. So now moving into black paint, and we're going to fill in. We're going to do basically the first layer for the cat. Then we're going to let everything dry, and we'll come back and put a second layer on the cat and start doing the letters and words um, and start getting comfortable with the pressure of our brush. All right, and again, if you're using student grade paint, I do recommend that you apply it a little bit thicker, or what I'll be doing here is doing two layers um, on the cat to make the opacity of the paint that I'm applying a little bit more thicker and a little more opaque. So two options, you can apply your paint thicker or you can do multiple layers. And that's kind of the nice thing about acrylic paint is just the multiple layers that you can do. So um, something that I used to tell all my first time students and it came a, a bit of a safety net if you paint something that you don't like um, kind of like there's that yellow on top of the cat head right there um, you just paint right on top of it after the paint dries so there's a lot of wiggle room a lot of area to just play and have fun when you're working with acrylic paint all right it's looking good just gonna go back and reshape areas and after this point, I will recommend that you pause the video and take a progress photo. But if you took progress photos um, at prior steps, good job. All right, so I did let this fully dry. Now moving down to the pointy brush and yellow paint and just filling in that entire eyeball. I will go over and put the pupil on there when we do the second layer of the black paint on the cat. 
All right, so first what we're going to do is that red kind of uh, design above or behind the cat's head. And as we do this and the other uh, letters today, I want you to breathe, relax, take it slow. This is not a race. And I want you to play with the pressure of your brush, treating your brush like a pencil and using just the tip of it. You can even see where my pinkies kind of um, shot out onto a dry spot on the canvas and I'm using that as my pivot point. Um, you can also rest your forearm against the edge of the table. Whatever you need to do to just kind of get more comfortable with holding the brush. And if this is one of your first time paintings or you're in the very beginning stages and you've never done skinny lines like this or words, be kind to yourself. Um, you can do this multiple times and you will see improvements with your brush control and your brush pressure um, the more that you do tiny like little detailed work like this. So again, be kind to yourself if this is your first time trying to do these skinny lines. It does get better with practice. And if you're doing this and you're um, finding that your brush is kind of shaky as you go to apply the lines, that means you're holding your breath. So if you exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, it's going to make your process so much easier. And as you go through this, your muscle is remembering a lot, your brain's taking in a lot, and the stuff that you learn in today's painting makes more sense the next time that you paint. So that's why I encourage my students to find creative outlets on a regular basis. Now for the design here, you can kind of follow what I'm doing. You can do your own thing. Um, you can stick with just lines. I did break this up into kind of three sections uh, with the arcs of the circle and just kind of filling up different little um, areas. I've had some people do this painting and they put their name back there, they put a message, or they fill it in with a solid color. You have full freedom to do whatever you want. No matter what you do, you're getting good practice. All right, and this turned out pretty nice. So we're gonna move right along using the same color, some of our letters for sh um, for the uh, that right-hand side. <laughs> Um, are done with red and then some of them are done with black. So same thing here. Exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas. Play with the pressure. If you've got a few places where it's a bit of a wider line and some places it's a skinnier line, just embrace where you're at for today. And again, notice how often I am reloading the paintbrush. Almost with every letter, I go back and grab more paint. Do the letter, go back and grab more paint. You want to make sure that all this nice effort that you're doing is actually working. And if you don't keep reloading your brush with paint, um, you're going to go through the motions and not apply anything. All right. And you'll even, as you're um, applying this paint to your surface, you'll know if you've got enough pigment or enough paint or not. And if you have to go over it a second or third time, that's okay. It's just good practice. All right. So a few places, again, if you want to take a progress photo, um, I'm going to make a little bit of that yellow red combo or actually sorry just the yellow for the words on the bottom I thought I was gonna make a mixture for a minute all right so same thing that small pointy brush we're gonna be doing some of these letters and you definitely want to make sure all this is dry because you don't want um, your yellow blending in with the red base that you put down and acrylic paint usually dries in about 15 minutes all right, and again, grabbing new paint every couple of brush strokes. Uh, find your balance, breathe, put your pinky out if you need to steady your hand, rest your forearm against the edge of the table. If you need to turn or rotate the canvas because that makes it easier, go right ahead and do that. I don't do that on here just because I'm filming the video and just try to keep it in a nice orientation for you guys. But adjust what you need to. If you need to put the canvas on your lap, if you need to do a handstand while you're doing this, uh, please get a picture of that, but do what you need to do um, to make this process a little bit easier. And then do it again. Like I said, keep finding creative outlets in your life. All right, so moving right into the black to finish up the, um, the rest of the letters. And then we'll get the eyes on the cat in there. And we'll probably do one more layer on the cat. And as I was editing this, I realized that I left out one final detail. So I'm going to give you guys homework. So when you are done with this painting, uh, Google uh, Le Chat Lenore, I think I said that correctly, um, or at least close enough that you know what it is, and pull up the original image from the artist for this. And I want you to find 
the one highlight detail, it's kind of obvious, hopefully, um, that I did not do, and I want you to do it on yours. And literally, it's just a few lines of some highlight that you will be able to see when you look at the original um, painting or the original uh, poster. So that's your homework. All right, so we've got all those lines in there. We're going to do the top, um, that shelf or the cabinet that the cat is sitting on, and go back and get those pupils in there. So you guys have done a great job. Um, yeah, moving back up to the larger brush as I fill in and just do that second layer of black. But again, great job today, you guys. Really glad you took time out of your day to hang out with me and paint. Please send me photos of what you paint. Share this with others. Um, in the world that we currently live in, we need more relaxed and creative people. So get your friends to paint with you. Makes for just a fun afternoon or evening. All right, and amazing how much better and more opaque that looks with that second layer on there. So if you realize that maybe your background or the cabinet that the cat is sitting on, that maybe you want to do two layers on that, go right ahead. Use this video as just a baseline, but you have full permission to deviate, add to, change, switch it up. Um, like I said, it's just most important that you are creative and bringing that into your daily life. All right, so uh, eye slits here, and that yellow paint's pretty dry, and then we're gonna put the whiskers and um, the little eyebrow lines. There we go. Again, same light pressure. Rotate the canvas as needed as you make these. And I think it's like three whisker lines and then two little like eyebrow hair lines. There we go. Again, you're more than welcome to reference the original for that. So thanks again, you guys. Have a great day, and until next time, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope you are happy with how your paintings turned out. I'm really proud of you for getting creative. As you're uploading these to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email me your pictures paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. I really enjoy seeing them. Um, I try to post them on social media to encourage other beginner painters um, to try the process of painting. But please share this with your community as well. Anybody who is kind of scared to paint, share your experience with them and let them know kind of how much you benefited from it and how much you enjoyed the process. So kind of share, share the fun. Um, with that being said, if you have any comments, questions, feedback, things that you want me to paint in the future, please leave a comment. I try to respond to everybody as quickly as I can and any of the future suggestions for paintings, I add that to my production list and get to them as quickly as I can. So in the meantime, please keep getting creative. Uh, let me know how you're doing, and until next time, cheers.